All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Hope you are doing well. I'm just refreshing the video feed to make sure it's showing up for you guys at home. But this is Paint with Lovejoy. And today we are painting a cute little happy sloth. All right, and it does look actually kind of fuzzy on the screen. So sorry about this next where it's gonna be. I'm gonna just clean the screen real quick. If I can, there we go. All right, hopefully that helped. Let's see, I'm waiting until it shows up on the screen. Sorry, just cleaned it. The normal stuff with cell phones. All right, so like I said, this is Paint with Lovejoy. We're painting a very cute sloth today. And yes, looks like everything is showing up. All right, we had a few technical issues this week. So like I said, just making sure everything works okay. There we go. Okay, so a few things about what you're looking at here. We are gonna be painting a really cute sloth. And if you look at the background, um, the surface of the canvas, you can tell that there's a couple of layers. There's some texture on here. I have repurposed a canvas, which means I have put gesso on it, and then I can paint a new painting on top of that. So if you've got old canvases at home and you don't want to buy new ones, but you want to paint more, check out the link in the description box below, and you can see how you can re-gesso, reuse a canvas. For our design here on the canvas, you've got two options. You can pause the video, draw what you see to the best of your ability, and it's good practice. If that seems a little bit overwhelming, at the end of this demo, I will upload this traceable to the website. You can purchase, download, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you can transfer this onto your canvas, and it takes away some of those beginning frustrations of uh, drawing and getting your composition on there. And then that way you can jump right into painting. So whichever option you choose, um, just pick back up uh, at this point in the video and you can watch what we do. And for our colors today, it is a pretty muted color palette. We're gonna be sticking with, this is our umber, uh, burnt sienna, which is kind of a reddish brown and raw sienna, which is kind of a lighter brown. If you do not have umber, and when we get to that point, I'll talk about it, you could actually mix your raw sienna and a little bit of black to get to that color. So there's always options. And then we have red for our heart and we are gonna do a pink background here. So I am gonna be doing this with brushwork today. And hi Rhonda, glad you could join us. And hi Sonia, thanks for jumping on. Um, and good suggestion for later, the reflections in the water. I'll come up with that for, come up with something for a demo. So as we're going along today, if you guys have any questions at all, um, put them in the chat and I will address them while I am painting. Um, and I'll stop every now and then to look over at the chat and see if any questions pop up. But again, we are starting, I'm gonna paint a light pink background here and then we will go uh, probably a medium pink for the heart and then a little bit darker. But you are more than welcome to change out any of the colors that I use. So if you want a different colored background or a different heart or even have your sloth holding something different, go right ahead. You have full permission to deviate from the plan and change it up. So if you are painting with the brush for the first time, a few brush strokes to try. You've got kind of the full width, then you can turn it sideways, creates a little bit smaller one. And then the most stress relieving one, literally slapping your brush on the canvas. And it's almost as if you're making X marks, but you're going to be filling in that whole canvas space. Whoops. And if you just do what I just did and your background overlaps into your sloth, do not freak out. Um, acrylic paint dries rather quickly. So if you paint something that you don't like, you just let it dry and you can paint right on top of it again. And by the time we get into the sloth colors, um, it'll be dry enough that it'll just go right on top of it. Now, as you're painting your background, if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress out, don't freak out about that. It's excellent practice. Um, and the more that you mix a color, the more your brain is recognizing um, what two pigments look like together, what it takes to mix to that color. So you are learning a lot. Um, so like I said, don't get too frustrated if you have to mix your color multiple times. And I'd actually recommend that you mix your color multiple times rather than making a gigantic mixture for the whole thing. More for just the practice of getting comfortable with paint and mixing your colors. 
All right, and you can follow along with this video or any of my videos, and you can use any materials that you want. If you wanna use colored pencils or markers or watercolor paper or watercolor paint on watercolor paper, um, feel free, use what you have at home. Art and the creative process is not about having the best or the top materials, but making the best of what you have at home and utilizing um, your resources at hand. All right, and if you are using acrylic paint and you're using student grade paint, kind of like I am, you might notice that your paint's a bit on the transparent side. So if you apply it a little thicker, you'll get a bit better coverage. And if you need to do two or three coats, totally okay if you need to do a couple. So we've kind of got our nice background on here, but I like having variety in my background. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just grab a chunk of that white, slap it here, slap it here, maybe one up there. And then let's see, let's actually go ahead and grab some white, do that same thing here, here, there. All right, then I kind of wipe the brush and this is really fun, very, very therapeutic. And using light pressure, you don't have to clean it too much just because we are um, sticking with the same color, but wiping off that excess paint does help. And then with light pressure, you're literally just gonna slap your brush on top of it, play with it. You are moving this new paint color into the background color. And if you even need to go back and grab that background color, you can slap it on top of there and then start mixing. So with this wet on wet blending, it is a lot of kind of back and forth. You may put a dark color on, then you have to go back to the other color. You know, so don't be afraid if you have to go back to one of those beginning colors or shades to adjust. And just kind of play with this. There's really not a great rhyme or reason to anything. Do it because it feels good. Do it because you find it interesting. Do it because you find it's therapeutic. And right here, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of my pink. There we go. And like I said, you can go back and forth. I just want a little darker up that area. And if you have any frustrations, anxiety, as we go through all this craziness of our world, throw it into your painting. This is the beauty of creative outlets. You get to escape the world for a little bit of time um, and hang out in your own imagination. And I have no doubt that your own imagination right now is way cooler than the current world circumstances. So let's hang out there. All right. Oh, nice. Sonia, you found some watercolor pencils. Um, and she's asking, what is the difference between paint and pencils? So uh, with the watercolor pencils, kind of like colored pencils, you could start drawing on here, um, basically just like a pencil. And then you would take your brush with a little bit of water and right where you put the pigment, then you can kind of manipulate it and the water makes it bleed. So it's not fully like the wet on wet blending, but kind of similar concept where you have your main pigment and then the water kind of helps you blend it and play with it. So um, there's no, it's not better to have the paint or better to have the pencils, just kind of find a groove. And sometimes it's nice for the pencils to have that concentrated pigment in the pencil to apply, and then you can manipulate with the brush. All right, so for the heart that our sloth is holding, we are gonna jump in and do that because I want that to dry. And likely I'm just gonna paint right over those three toes. So don't feel bad if you do that, because by the time we do come back to put the toes on there, that heart is gonna be pretty dry. And I'm not going for direct red, just going on for a pretty dark magenta. I might throw some red on there in a minute. And you are more than welcome to change the color of your heart or have your sloth hold something entirely different. So yeah, so go ahead, totally okay if you're using acrylic paint. If you are using other materials like colored pencils and even watercolors, don't go over the nails, especially if you're using watercolors. All right. And let's see, let's grab a little bit of that direct red, going a little bit darker. And I actually got too much pigment on there, too much paint, so just wiping some of that off. And I am imagining that there would be a little bit of a shadow underneath those, uh, those toes. And it was so fun looking for pictures of sloths to paint for today. They smile so much and are just absolutely adorable. 
I do believe I had a smile on my face while I was looking at all the photographs. All right. Excellent. So we've got Photography Queen. Thanks for jumping on. And ah, so grateful that you find um, what you call them the Lovejoy challenges in the artist in you. That's awesome. So I'm really glad that all of you guys are showing up and supporting me in this and supporting yourselves and trying new creative outlets. I personally have thoroughly appreciated and enjoyed having to do this every day. It's been a good, consistent thing in my daily life, and it's helped kind of deal with current circumstances and uh, business changes that are happening. So I did actually just take a little bit of that white and same thing in our background, just did a little bit of a highlight on the top of our heart. Then we're gonna clean the brush really good. And let's see, we're gonna go into raw sienna and white um, the face of our sloth and even his little arm is going to be the lightest area and then his body is going to be a little bit darker to where we'll use the burnt sienna and umber for his body and we're going to use raw sienna and white for his face and his arm and then eventually his toes all right so if you need to and likely i'll be moving down to the pointy brush in a few moments um, but feel free to adjust brushes or tools as needed. All right, and let's see, let's grab a little bit of that raw sienna. Um, even when I was looking at a lot of the pictures of the sloths, they come in a wide variety of shades. So if your shades are a little darker or lighter than what I'm using, totally okay. So I'm going for kind of a creamy color. And, oh. I lost my photo. Hold on, let me pull that back up. There we go. So yeah, so the middle of his face and his hands have a nice creamy color. So again, I'm applying this kind of thick just to cover um, the texture of my canvas and to have a bit more opaque coverage. And I like that his face has a hint of a heart shape in it. Um, that actually inclined me to make sure he was holding a heart instead of another object. Whoops, and there I go again, going over another area. Don't stress out. Today's a bit more of a sloppier day for me. Um, and the more that you paint on a regular basis, and especially if you can get to the point of painting on a daily basis, you are gonna find days where it's a little more challenging than the day before. Um, so if you've ever practiced yoga, they kind of say the same thing, that maybe one day you could bend down and touch your toes, no problem. And then the next day, maybe it's a little more sore, a little more difficult. Um, you just have to kind of take yourself where you're at for the day. Um, so for me, today's apparently a sloppy day since I've overlapped areas that I don't normally do. So just have to embrace it. All right, so I'm actually gonna move down to the smaller brush so I have a bit more control. And I'm gonna grab some of that direct raw sienna. And if you went super, super light here, um, this directs raw sienna might be too dark, so if you need to, just go two or three shades darker than the mixture you just used. So again, we're going to do a little bit of that wet on wet blending, and he's got a little bit of a shadow around his nose. So I'm basically just placing the pigment on here, and then I'm going to go back and blend it in. So at home, just take observe where I'm placing the pigment and do your best to just mimic what you see um, to the best of your ability while you're at home. All right, so I think that covers it. And oops, I forgot to get this part down here. So I'm going cleaning the brush, and sometimes this happens. Apparently, like I said, this is just part of my day today. So I totally missed this area. So I'm going back and grabbing that base color just place it on there and this is the beauty of painting you know sometimes it gets a little out of out of sync and that's just part of where you're at for today okay there we go all right so again wiping that brush off and i'm going to go back i'll give you two different ways that you can blend this the first one's going to be kind of like what i did in the background where you're just using kind of light pressure and blending it and smoothing it into that first color another method is you can do this kind of tapping method and it diffuses the color in a slightly different manner. And I actually like doing that tapping method with this brush instead, 
with the, the medium flat brush. And again, with that kind of tapping method, it's just picking up a little bit of both colors and squishing them together. So for my first time painters, um, and that's what first time and beginner painters are what my channel is geared towards, um, this type of blending method but might be a little bit more feasible and easier to do until you get a little more brush control. So as you're at various stages in your um, painting evolution, be kind to yourself. Oh, this guy's so cute and happy. Okay, and just checking to see if there's any other questions. Cool, you guys are doing good. So I'm gonna make a little bit more of that light raw sienna color, and that's again the white with the raw sienna. And we're gonna fill in his arm. They do have pretty light arms, at least for the photo I am referencing. And then we'll do the same thing. We're gonna put some darker shades in there and then we'll go in with our darker color. Uh, today I am painting on a flat panel compared to a lot the, I think pretty much all the rest of the demos where I was on a stretched canvas. So if you are on a stretched canvas at home, when you were doing the background, I just recommend that you carry that color around the tops, the sides and the bottom, just so it looks extra awesome when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. All right, so now I'm actually just grabbing some of that raw sienna again, and we're imagining the shadow is on the right-hand side. So just slap that on there, and then whichever blending method that you found kind of nice, just kind of toning that in there. We will be putting some more hairs on top of this. All right, now we're gonna be moving into our umber. Um, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and clean the brush. Let's grab some burnt sienna and get the eyeball color in there so it can dry before we have to go back and do the black. So uh, pointy brush, just the direct burnt sienna, which is that reddish brown. And if you want to change the color of your sloth's eyes, if you want a blue eyed sloth, feel free, switch this up. Um, when I go back in with the black paint, I'm going to reshape that pupil a little bit. If you happen to go over the pupil or even over that white dot, don't stress. We can reapply it towards the end of the painting. And if you are painting along and holding your breath, big inhale, even if you're just watching at home, take a big deep breath for me because that makes just for relaxed people. And we do need more relaxed people right now. Whoops, let me add a little bit more here. Okay, so now I'm actually going to move back to the big brush. So do clean that out really good. And we're going to do the same thing like we did with the raw sienna. We're going to take some white, a little bit of umber, um, and we'll put our base on and then we'll put darker shades on there. So I'm just going to move some of that white over to this side. And we're going for about a one to one ratio. Um, I still want this to be pretty dark. I don't want it as light as the light tan. Now, if you don't have umber at home, and umber um, is just kind of like a diluted, dirty gray color, um, kind of even a greenish gray color. If you do not have that, let me grab my other brush. You can take a little bit of your raw sienna, tiny, tiny, tiny amount of black. Whoops, that was actually too much. And you can mix that and you can kind of come close to that color and then you can start adding your white to that. So option, if you don't have that particular color at home, use what you have. Um, and if you wanted to, you could even, because like I said, the sloths come in different shades and colors, you could do the same thing with the burnt sienna and have a reddish brown sloth. So totally your call. All right, so first we're actually just gonna fill in the whole sloth, get all of that in there, and then we're gonna start putting our colors and we'll get into longer brush strokes because these sloths are very fluffy and they have hair that just kind of goes in all different directions and they rock it out. All right, so again, coming right up next to all my other elements. If you are painting that on that stretched canvas, carry that color right around the side. And again, apply your paint a little bit thicker if you are seeing the canvas through your paint, if it's a bit on the transparent side. All right, 
And as everybody is painting at home and doing their thing, I'm starting to get emails and pictures from some of my students that are doing their own um, paint party using one of my YouTube videos. So it is an excellent way to make some family memories or friend memories right now. So feel free to do that. Pick one of my YouTube videos, have everybody do it, get their supplies. You follow along, everybody follows along at their own pace, but then you guys are all together on Zoom or a video conferencing app. So please do that. It's great for bonding right now. And if you choose to do that, send me a picture of your final um, Zoom group photo where everybody's holding their painting up to the Zoom uh, app thing. Uh, I'm really enjoying those. I've got about three students that have sent those to me and I'm doing social media posts this afternoon, so they should be showing up on my feed um, in the next week or so. All right, and our sloth is coming along. All right, going right over that background. All right, so while this is wet, and because I am painting on a regessoed, reused surface, my paint actually dries a lot faster. Um, it just absorbs all that color. So I'm gonna do this. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot of longer dash marks with our darker colors. So with this brush, I kind of push it, flatten it out, and I'm gonna be using the side of the brush um, to make longer brush strokes. But if you need to jump down to that small pointy brush, feel free to do that. So I'm going to start grabbing this raw sienna just by itself and we're going to put our shadows in first. We're going to go underneath that chin and again just like that raw sienna in the lighter area I'm going to place these colors in their appropriate spots and then I'm going to go back and blend them in. And it's going to look kind of funky right now, that's all right. And oh, underneath. All right, and then basically I'm just kind of moving my brush back and forth, making X marks, picking up some of that base color from the lighter one and blending the darker into it. And again, if you found that that tapping method like this worked a little bit better for you, go with that style. And even if you do a little of both, that's okay. Like I said, it's just important the fact that you're actually painting right now. Um, whenever you're painting, if you're painting for the live one or you're catching this on the replay. And I am noticing a lot of people are checking out the replays um, afterwards and downloading the traceables for it. So just awesome. Um, I am quite thrilled with the amount of uh, basically video inventory that I'm able to create doing these daily demos. All right, and again, you're just observing the place where you, you see me putting these colors and doing your best to mimic that. It does not have to be perfect. So we're going around the perimeter. I grabbed a bit more of that umber. And then I'm gonna switch into the smaller pointy brush so I can get in a little bit around um, those eyeballs and get that nose in there too. All right, so let's see, just looking at a few questions. Uh, let's see, Sonia's asking, uh, why does the paint come up in the canvas shows when you're blending? Okay, um, depending on the type of brand of paint that you're using, if it's student grade paint or even the craft paint like we've talked about before, the uh, apple barrel, the folk art paint, um, those are on the very transparent and thin side. So you'd have to apply probably two or three times the amount of paint that you're applying just to get good coverage um, so the canvas doesn't show up. And then you also have to mind the pressure of your brush. The more that you push your brush against the canvas, the closer it's coming to the canvas to allow that to kind of show up. So maybe once you've got your paint on there, hold your brush at kind of a 45 degree angle so that we are kind of using more of the side of the brush like this 
and not having the bristles touch back to the canvas. So it's a lot of kind of back and forth. And even here, you can see I had a little bit of water on there and it kind of cut it back to the canvas. So you just go back and apply a little thicker paint and less brush pressure. So hopefully that helped answer your question. Okay, so I'm actually moving down to the pointy brush. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get into that umber. We're gonna do the nose and the mouth. And then we're gonna start making these long, um, fluffy brush strokes for our sloth. All right. And unfortunately, this one will go a little past the 30 minute mark just because it's a little more involved. I am doing a San Diego Humane Society live Facebook feed this Friday, a little painting demo. We're going to do a black and white kitten and celebrate um, their kitten nursery. Uh, and that will be Friday at 2 p.m. on their Facebook page um, and 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. All right, so now I'm just kind of going around the eyeballs. I don't want any canvas space showing, so there's a few places that I'm just going over. All right. He's got his nice dark mask on. Same thing. We're going to fill in that bottom of the nose, and I am going right over those nostril lines. The top of the nose, I'm going to leave this here for a minute so you can see that top shape that I've left, which is almost like a little curve, little arc right above it. And that one, I'm actually going to go back to that light umber, and that will be kind of the highlight on the top of it. There we go. I'm going to wipe that brush off, and then with light pressure where that light umber and the darker umber meet, I'm just moving my brush over it with light pressure so it's not a sharp line, but we still see a transition happening there. And then going back to the umber, we're going to outline his mouth or her mouth. And again, I love how much these guys just smile naturally. Their resting face is just a smile. We need more people like that. Okay, so let's see. Let's start. I'm going to actually go back and get those nails in there, and then we're going to start making long brush strokes uh, for the fur of our sloth. All right, so going back to that light shade or lighter, it can be maybe a little darker than what you were using, and using that small pointy brush, because my paint's transparent, I can still see the outline there. If you can't see the outline anymore, you're basically making super long triangles, you know, with the tip being out here, and then it gets a little fatter as it comes in towards the arm. So basically just placing that right on top of it. And my red, just a few portions of my red is still wet, so it's getting a little bit of that color in there, but that's okay. All right, sometimes some people do have some interesting looking fingers. This sloth is going to be one of them. Oops, so making that color again. And again for here, because that red is showing up, I make that a little darker than I needed it to, or a little lighter than I needed it to. So just going to add that on all of them. But if your underneath color is showing up, this is a good place to just kind of practice of your light pressure. And again, it just gets more comfortable and easier with more practice. All right, so we will clean those up in a minute. I'm going to give that a little more time to dry. And we're going to start making these long little hair marks. Um, so I'm going to start again with that light mixture. And like I said, you can use the middle size brush sideways. Let me clean this off and I'll show you both applications or your pointy brush. And like I said, usually my favorite is this brush sideways. And we're going to start on the perimeter and making these long dash marks. And again, we're imagining that the fur, the, these line, long lines, blah, the fur, you're moving your brush in the direction of the fur. And here I am overlapping the perimeter 
of our sloth over the background. And the background is fully dry on mine. And this is just giving them that nice fluffy feel. And we're gonna go kind of all over with this light color and then we're gonna go in with the dark color. So you do wanna overlap these brush strokes. And this does kind of help hide anything that you might not like underneath. If you do wanna do it with the large pointy brush, same thing, you're just keeping um, light pressure and if you need to, um, rest your forearm against the edge of the table. And you definitely want to make sure you're breathing while you're doing this. It is not to your benefit to hold your breath. And every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. Because like I said, my paint is on the transparent side. So you'll get in kind of a good groove. But if you don't grab more paint every couple of brush strokes, then you're just going through the motion and not actually applying anything to your canvas. And it is kind of cool when you take this color and you do overlap some of the darker areas. Notice that contrast compared to what it looks like on the lighter spots. And again, you're just strengthening your power of observation about how things and colors interact with each other. And again, imagining each brush stroke is a strand of fur as you move your brush in the direction of the fur. All right, I'm gonna move back up to this one. I do, I am a little partial to it. And we're gonna do the same thing on his arm too. And again, same color, but it shows up a little bit different on this burnt sienna compared to other colors. And the concept of color theory is the fact that we interpret our color based on the color next to it. So that's why this color looks a little different when it's on top of the raw sienna compared to the light umber compared to the dark umber. Okay, and then as we come around the face, we're just kind of hugging the shape of that cute little sloth face. Again, don't be afraid to overlap those brush strokes. And it will be nice when I move into that darker color, just so you can see the difference of adding that second layer on top of this. And if you want to give your sloth a specific hairstyle, go right ahead and do that. And let's get a few hanging out in his face. Alright, so let's see, just looking to see a few other questions on here. Um, why is it called pop art when outlined with black? Um, I'm actually not sure the official definition for that, but there's something about the black outline that gives it a bit of a cartoon feel, and that has been translated to the pop art term. Um, you don't really ever see black outlines in nature. You usually just kind of see a shadow, but there's never an actual outline. Um, so I'm assuming that leads to the pop art quality as well. So unfortunately, I think that is the best that I can answer that question. All right, so now I'm gonna clean that brush. I'm gonna go in with the uh, umber, just the direct umber and basically do the same thing. So mimicking that shape and it is really cool just to see how much the painting changes as you get more layers and more depth. Again, grabbing those, that brush every, or that paint every couple of brush strokes. And don't be afraid to overlap the other colors. I think I'm actually gonna go in with a little bit of black because I wanna make that shadow a little bit darker. Uh, around the heart. And if you are painting on the rather thick side, which is good, but if you're finding that you're getting some of that lighter color in your brush, you can always wipe it off again and go back and grab more paint. And this is something that you can go back and forth with on your layers over and over and over again. So remember to get out of your chair, look at your painting from a distance, and assess what is working and what's not working. And then you go back up close 
because you're generally about two feet away from your canvas while you're painting it. But the normal viewing distance for just about everything in life is about five to 10 feet away. So while you're creating, you have to kind of get in that habit. I'm gonna give this guy a little extra hair hanging out. Um, there we go. <laughs> So while you're in the groove of painting, you have to kind of remember the vantage point of your viewer. So you do have to get out of your chair every now and then and look at it from that distance. And don't be upset if you actually like your painting more from that distance compared to two feet in front of you. No matter what, everything in life looks better from a distance. Wish that was not the case. All right, so I'm kind of hanging around uh, the edge of that face and I am overlapping some of that lighter raw sienna that we put on there first and bringing it up to that bottom chin line and here as I'm moving around the face I'm in a lot smaller little dash marks and again imagining that the movements kind of come in this direction and this direction so kind of we have our center kind of vertical line that all of our brush strokes are radiating out from. And I'm definitely going to go in with some black to intensify a bit more shadow around the heart. But I am taking this umber and coming up right up next to the heart. This is one that you don't necessarily want to cross over the heart. I want to keep that kind of solid. And I may actually outline that with black paint. All right. Oh, and can't forget the arm. Again, kind of cool how this same color looks one way with the umber. And then it looks a little bit different as we move in to move, put it on top of the raw sienna. And one of the biggest things about art, it's never about being perfect or the best painter in the world or the best artist in the world, but it's about looking at your world from a new perspective after you paint or after you do something creative. All right, so while I have that color on there, I'm going to take that burnt umber and on the bottom of each of the toes, we're going to create the shadow line. So it's on the bottom of each toe. On the opposite side, on the top of each toe, we're going to come in with some white. There we go. And let's get a few more up in here and around the perimeter. And then I'm going to switch into the black and then the white. And as you're painting at home, send me your pictures, tag me in social media. Um, I'm getting about probably five to six emails every morning, and then I get four or five more in the evening. And it just, it makes me smile. I really like to see your guys' creations. Just about all of you are like, I'm not that good. I can't do this. I just started. You're all doing amazing. So continue to be kind to yourself and continue to enjoy the journey the process of painting because that's really it's more about your process and less about your final outcome because I do want you to constantly paint it is good and it's more about how you feel while you're painting all right so I think I'm about ready for black okay let's see awesome glad you learned something new uh, glad you like it Cindy thanks Yes, he is coming alive now. Um, let's see, another question. The paint might come up in blending if the base layer is still wet. Yes, and that's what happened when I was working on these claws because that red was still wet. With acrylic paint, you could actually give it 20 minutes, let it dry, and come back and paint on top of it. Um, and that helps as you want to keep stuff separate. So adjust your um, method based on what you want to achieve. My artwork on my website, my professional work, which is lovejoycreations.com, I paint with a palette knife and I actually really enjoy letting the layers dry in between each session so that way I don't have anything mixed with the layer when I put the new layer on top of it. So for some of these demos, I actually don't have enough time to let them dry and I don't own a hair dryer. So we make do with what we can. But feel free, jump over to my website and check out my portfolio. And on those paintings, like I said, I paint with a palette knife, but my paintings have almost a hundred layers of acrylic paint on it before I consider them done or before I resin them. 
So you literally can layer acrylic paint over and over and over again. So as you're watching me apply the black, I am just using tiny little dash marks and you can see I'm grabbing paint um, every two or three brush strokes. I can't actually wait to see this until it's um, from that distance just to see how it's translating. But this black just gives us one more darker shade. I'll put a little bit more over here. And because I'm actually doing this, it's making it to where I don't necessarily need to outline that heart like I thought I was going to earlier. So painting is always a conversation with between you and the canvas. Do not fight the canvas too much because it generally always wins. So kind of giving this guy some bottom, not necessarily eyeliner, um, but just kind of following that bottom section of his little mask. And now I'm going to switch over back to that pointy brush. We're going to go back in and re-outline those pupils. And I have a feeling I might go over that, that white dot, so we'll reapply it. And you know what, just to show for you guys at home, I'm just going to go right over it. So if you do go over yours, totally okay. We're going to reapply that white catch light. And now I'm doing the eyeliner. And that's literally just going around that whole eyeball. And then we're going to do, you can reference that traceable or that original image and those little circles for the nose, just filling in that shape. If you um, can't see those through your paint, just kind of go back to the beginning of the video and see where I put them. Uh, where they were on the traceable or uh, look at the traceable and you can see where they're at. Okay, so white. Let me put some fresh white on here. And then we are coming into the conclusion of our painting. Okay, so clean that brush really good. We're going to do the catch light. We're going to do a catch light on top of each of those toes. And then I think I'll do a few of the hairs with the white as well. So first one, redoing that catch light. And again, I'll be putting wet paint on top of wet paint. So it's going to be a touch and then a pull right back. So just again, hold your breath if you need to put your pinky out to steady it. And it is important that this white dot is a little bit on that pupil and then a little bit that overlaps uh, the eyeball color. All right, so let's see. Let's do one more right on the nose. Oh, and I forgot to trim this brush. I've got that one wild hair at the end of this brush. And if you have that on yours, it is totally okay to trim your brush uh, with some scissors. Uh, let's go down to the nails. All right, so with that white on the top of the nails, it's just creating a bit of a highlight and it is pretty amazing how when you're looking at this and especially when you look at it from the distance how much this white makes it kind of pop forward all right so I'm actually just real quickly I'm going to go back to that light umber since I still have some of it mixed and right underneath the nostrils I'm going to put a little bit of a catch light let's see if I can get that hair off And that one little wild hair can really mess it up. So if you do that, then you need to go back to that umber. Like I said, this is part of that back and forth and just kind of where you're at for the day for painting. So hopefully I've got some other paintings to do today. Hopefully they go a little bit smoother. Okay, and last one, I'm gonna go in with white paint and give him some highlights on his hair and then that should bring us into the conclusion. All right, and there we go. Same thing, you're gonna get into a groove. So every couple of brush strokes, grab more paint. And if you think about it like hair, these are just his highlights. The dark spaces were his low lights. Um, if that helps as you're doing your 
your painting. And make sure you name your, your uh, sloth. Uh, give them a name. And if you want write, to write it in the heart, you can use a Sharpie marker, a little bit more control, um, or you can use your brush. And these would make cute little Valentine, little heart, uh, sloth hearts. So keep that in mind for next year. Oh, and then we need his arm. Definitely need some highlights hanging out here. All right. Again, hopefully you guys got to see today just how much layering different colors on top of each other creates some nice depth. And again, don't be afraid to overlap brush strokes and overlap colors. I would say that for a lot of my very first time painters, that's um, kind of a challenging concept to get as the overlapping and the layering aspect. So if you don't fully get it right now, keep on painting. It will start to make sense um, at a little bit later date and you'll have kind of an aha moment go, ah, oh, there we go. And then you'll have another aha moment when you learn something else. So keep it going. Okay, oh, this guy does look cute. So when I look at my phone, um, I can kind of see it from the same distance as well. So yeah, it does look cute. I appreciate you guys uh, spending time with me, taking time out of your day to hang out with me for this painting and in the other paintings. I uh, truly, truly appreciate your support. All right, just checking to see if there's any other questions. Yes, I only use three brushes and I do tend to stick to just one brush a lot. So, And thanks, Mike, glad you like it. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Email me photos of what you paint. I forgot what tomorrow's uh, subject is, but scroll to my main page and you can scroll down and see all the future stuff. Leave suggestions for what you want me to paint. And yeah, have a great day. Until next time, guys. Cheers.